Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio. I'm your host, Deborah Bailey. And when I started this show in 2008, I was on a mission to promote women-owned businesses and help women succeed by providing resources and valuable tips from other women and men, small business owners. In each interview, my guests speak openly about their triumphs, the scary times, and tough decisions they had to make along the way. Women Entrepreneurs Radio is about showing women how to harness their natural strengths to achieve success on their own terms. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey. I'm so glad you could join me today. And definitely, if you're listening to this on uh, iTunes, for instance, uh, please make sure that you will uh, leave a um, comment or feedback or review. That's always good. So that helps the show be found by other people as well. So please make sure that you do that. And um, also stop by the blog, Women Entrepreneur Secrets. Dot com. There's more information there and also more information on the show guests and different links for how you can listen to the show. So hopefully you stop by the blog as well. So I want to introduce my guest. And Anita Amir is the author of Creative Visualization for Writers, an interactive guide for bringing your book ideas and your writing career to life. And the Amazon best-selling author of such books as How to Blog a Book and the author training manual. She's known as the inspiration to creation coach because she helps writers and other creative people combine their passion and purpose so they move from idea to inspired action and achieve more inspired results. Nina has self-published 18 books and has had as many as nine books on Amazon's top 100 lists and six on the same bestseller list at the same time. That's fantastic. So welcome, Nina. I'm really glad to have you here today. Oh, I'm just thrilled and honored to be here. Thank you for asking me. So, um, you know, we were talking a little bit before we got started. I, you know, her um, seen an interview, I read a written interview with you um, in another newsletter, and I was really excited to hear about this new book. And you've done so much, um, you know, self publishing and putting so many great ideas out here. But, you know, I usually ask guests, how do you, do you get started in this? That's a great question. Um, getting started, I really think, starts with writing. Mm, <laughs> you know, yes. with, with actually mm-hmm. sitting down and writing. But uh, what I usually tell people to do if they want to become an author is to to start out planning because many people just think, oh, I have an idea and I'll sit down and I'll write this book and then I'll get it published or I'll publish it myself and it's going to be this big, huge success. Mm -hmm. And that leads to a lot of heartbreak because today the competition out there is so tough Mm -hmm. in terms of books. There's so many books being published, especially because you can Mm self-publish. And so you really have to put the time in um, and the energy into researching your markets and the competition and all this stuff so that you can, um, you know, I call it building a business plan for your book. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the reason for that is because you have to produce something that's unique and necessary uh, in the category where it's going to sell. Mm-hmm. And you have to make sure you're targeting the needs of your market, you know, your ideal readers. And when you do that, then you have a higher likelihood of uh, producing a book that's going to sell. So how do you start? I think you start by by saying, I have this idea, let me flush it out and mm-hmm. see whether it's a good idea worth pursuing. You know, unless, of course, you're writing a book for legacy or just because, you know, it's it's a project from your heart. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you just sit down and you start writing. But you do also need structure. So, you know, part of, part of this is also developing a structure for a book and then writing it. So there's mm-hmm. kind of a lot to it. I, I sound like I kind of threw all kinds of things in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I agree. I, I, I really uh, totally agree with what you're saying um, because I've, I've self-published as well. That's why I'm, I'm just so excited to, um, to speak with you. And I, I know that other people I've talked to who have asked me, um, business people particularly, about writing a book. And then when you tell them, well, this actual writing and, and, you know, the whole process involved, 
they seem to be kind of like, uh oh, you know, they, they kind of run the other way because I, I guess they have this impression that they're just going to put something together really quickly and it's, as you said, it's going to sell right away and it's magic. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and it's not, it is not magic. You know, and I, 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 I deal with a lot of um, entrepreneurs and business people and one of the things I tell them is that they, um, it, for, well, for most of them, they're, they're put off also by the writing prospect mm -hmm. because they, they think that this task is something they're not good at. Mm -hmm. And there are ways to plan out a book in kind of minute detail with someone like myself. Uh, you know, I'm a book coach as mm -hmm. well as an author coach and um, author trainer. And um, you, you map it out to mm -hmm. the extent where you know exactly what needs to go into every chapter. And then you can speak the book. Mm hmm. You know, you mm -hmm. can actually, just like us, we're recording, right? Mm -hmm. You can record yourself talking about the book, or you can even use your coach or someone else to ask you questions. You can set it up that way where, you know, okay, we're going to ask these questions so that you'll remember to say these things. Mm -hmm. And then you take the transcript. You get a transcript done, and you, you know, what I usually suggest is that the person edit the transcript the first time through, uh -huh. and then have an editor like myself go through and edit it again. To make sure that, yeah, you know, that the sentences are good and strong and that also nothing's been left out, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So I think a lot of people are put off by that. But um, business people are, are, are actually well suited to write a book because mm -hmm. they can do the business planning aspect of it. That's, you know, they're, they're good at that. Mm -hmm. And so they can actually produce a book that is quite marketable if they apply the principles. Mm, that's true. That's a very good point. Um what I want to ask you about is with the uh, your book now, Creative Visualization. You know how how does that really help aspiring writers to become published authors? That's a great question. Also, um, here's the thing: most of us just uh, think that if we decide we're going to write a book, we're just going to sit down and write it, and mm -hmm. everything will go fine. The fact is that our mind gets in the way. Mm. We, you know, we have negative thoughts, we have limiting beliefs, uh, we have fear, you know, we have all kinds of things that come up that block us from actually doing what we say we want to do. So it's really important to employ visualization uh, because it will help um, kind of negate those negative thoughts and limiting beliefs and help you move through some of the fears. Mm -hmm. So let me use an example that is not from the writing world. Think about an athlete, like a marathon runner, okay? Mm -hmm. Athletes have been using visualization for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. A marathon runner will say, okay, I have to make it, you know, to mile, you know, I don't know, 20, right? Mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm running a, I don't even know how long are marathons, 50 miles, 30 miles, 20 mm -hmm. miles? <laughs> <laughs> it's a let's long say, way. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's just say 25 miles, okay? They're going to uh -huh. run 25 miles. And they know that at mile 10 or 15, they start to feel tired. Mm, mm -hmm. And what happens? Their mind starts saying, I can't do it. Mm. I'm tired. Oh, my yeah. God. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm never going to make it to the end. Mm -hmm. Then when they get to, like, the last mile or two, you know, we've watched those races, like the New York Marathon, right? And mm -hmm. you get these people who have this burst of energy and go flying by everybody <laughs> in the last mile or two. How do they do that, right? Mm -hmm. Because typically you're at that last mile or two and you're thinking, I am so tired. I have no more energy. My legs feel like red. Mm -hmm. I'll be lucky to cross the finish line, let alone catch up with the people ahead of me. Mm -hmm. What athletes do is they visualize. They visualize themselves at the midpoint when they're tired. Mm -hmm. And they visualize themselves generating more energy, mm -hmm. right? I mean, they only have as much energy as they have. But they, they can use their mind to generate more energy so that they keep going and they can, they can visualize themselves going from, I can't do this to, I can do this, I know I can do this, mm -hmm. and seeing themselves do that. Well, what happens is the mind doesn't know the difference between mm -hmm. the visualization and actually running the race. And so it begins to fire off messages to the muscles and the muscles go, oh, I need to, you know, energized and I need to feel uh, fresh mm -hmm. and ready to keep running. And those messages that go to the muscles and the muscles fire, that 
is like a training. It's as if they're running the race. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same at the end of the race. They can visualize themselves having this burst of energy that takes them flying past everybody, and they finish, you know, finish first. So for a writer, it's the same. If we visualize getting to the end of the book, mm. you know, getting the end of the manuscript, mm -hmm. um, if we visualize feeling scared or stuck and getting through that in some way, mm -hmm. if we visualize uh, needing to do the promotion that we don't really want to do, you know, right. or doing the editing or revising, if we visualize all that, the mind is firing all the time as if we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And it conditions us, it trains us and conditions us to be able to get through those hard points, mm -hmm. right? And so in the process of that, it's also changing your negative thoughts and your limiting beliefs because you're telling the brain, I can do this, and you're showing the brain, I can do this. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, that's great. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I, I, a friend of mine um, runs uh, marathons and um, she also skis and does all this great stuff that I don't do. But she, she's running the New York Marathon. I don't know if she's going to be this year. Um, but I just admire her because she just trains um, pretty much like I think every other day. And, and she'll say on Facebook how much she's run. And I'm like, oh, my God, there's so much discipline there. Um in order for her to work up to this ultimate goal. And I'm, I just admire that, you know, it's, it's amazing because it just seems to me like, Oh my God, I'm just going to like fall out. <laughs> if I even yeah. did that. Right, and writing a book is like running a marathon. Really <laughs> I, hadn't, you know? I hadn't thought about that, you know, cause I've, I've, I've written books and, and just never considered it on the same level. That's interesting though. You know, I, I, I hope that the listeners pick up on that because um, we look at other people and we think, oh, they can do this and they can do that. And we kind of, you know, we don't see what we, can, we are capable of. You know, we sell ourselves very short. And um, that's an interesting point. I never connected that before. So <laughs> I'll give myself much more credit next time around for, yeah, um, yeah that's right. right. And do the training. You know, yeah. Do the training. Yes. The visualization is definitely a training for writing the book. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, there are other things to do. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a certified high performance coach and I really believe that you have to get yourself, um, you know, you have to put in, in place strategies that make, you know, give you clarity and the, and energy and mm -hmm. courage and, mm -hmm. and productivity mm -hmm. so that you can also influence yourself to do what you need to do. So that's a training to it. And see, this is all a mind training. Yeah. The writers, it's not so much a physical training, although I highly recommend and strongly believe that you also have to build up your energy. Mm -hmm. You have to be thinking about all those same kinds of things athletes think about. So you have the, the endurance to get yes. through, right? Mm -hmm. But this is more mind training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's a great way to, to, um, to put it. Um, you know, when, how do you access the left brain and the right brain? Because we're told, you know, there's some impression that they're just like two separate, <laughs> two separate things. Um, is it really possible to access both when we're, when we're writing? Uh, it is. And, and you're right. We were all told that the left brain, you know, we're either left brain or right brain. Yes. Um, in fact, creativity and, um, you know, when we're writing, we, we can access both parts of the brain. And the mm -hmm. more we can do that, the more creative and productive we're going to be. Mm. And so what I, an easy thing to do in order to access both sides of the brain is to, uh, well, first of all, visualization mm -hmm. activates both sides of the brain. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are working, you know, with language, you're on the left side of the brain, right? Mm -hmm. But if you are listening to music at the same time, that's right brain. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's a very easy way to use both sides of your, of your brain. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're actually writing, you know, it's a little harder to do some of the things that ac access the right brain, although creativity is a right brain activity, mm -hmm. and so is imagination, right? Right. So you have an idea for a book, which is left brain, because it's it's logic and analysis and language and, and all those things that are left brain activities. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, when we visualize about it, we use we, we deliberately daydream. Mm -hmm. Then we're actually crossing over to the right brain, mm -hmm. which is going to make us more creative and make us more able to write the book. Mm -hmm. But when you're actually writing, you know, music is really the easiest thing to to use to 
to stimulate uh, the right side of the brain so that you're using both sides of the brain at the same mm-hmm. time. But you can just try, you know, kind of, again, put your brain in training mm-hmm. and do things like um, drawing or uh, coloring. Mm. And, you know, so in creative visualization for writers, I actually have a whole section that are coloring book pages, but they're not mandalas. You know? <laughs> There's so many of these adult coloring books out there, right? And right. It's just about coloring for relaxation. Mm-hmm. I have just, I have used the coloring book pages to focus your brain on what it is you want to create. Mm. So if you go and you color a page that is all about, that shows a picture of you, of, you know, hands on a keyboard, mm-hmm. then what you're doing is you're, you're focused on an image of what you want to create, which is you writing, right? Mm-hmm. But you're, doing that while coloring and that is also going to activate both sides of the brain wow that's terrific <laughs> i like that idea <laughs> that's great i i wasn't even aware of that i, I love it and I, I always listen to music when i write and i know it helps me so i'm, I'm glad to hear that i'm I'm really doing doing the right thing to activate uh, everything that needs to be firing while I'm I'm creating. Um, you know, a lot of people who listen to this or or entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs to be and and you know I've always talked to people. I'm sure that you meet many as well who say, well, I want to write a book, and they they really want to put either their personal experience, professional um, things to get out into the world. You know, what is what is some advice you would offer to those aspiring authors? So the first thing I would say is to just start writing, to go back Mm. to that, just start writing. Mm -hmm. And a fabulous way to get your work out into the world is with a blog. Mm -hmm. I'm a a big advocate of having um, an author website that has a blog and to begin putting your work out that way and getting feedback on it. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you have a personal story you want to tell, it's important to decide why you want to tell the story. Mm -hmm. Is it just for your own healing or for, is it to, um, uh, to advance your business, you know, advance your expert status, Mm -hmm. bring in customers, clients. Um, so for business people, typically, um, you know, I'll I'll talk to them about that sort of thing. What are your goals? So I think that's, you know, would be number two is Mm -hmm. besides just writing, Mm -hmm. um, is decide why you want to write this book because why you want to write it dictates the kind of book you want to write, Mm -hmm. right? Or Mm -hmm. need to write. So, you know, you might think you have a personal story that everybody wants to hear when in fact, maybe that story has been told 20 million times, which Mm -hmm. takes us back to the, you know, takes us back to the planning stage, Mm -hmm. you know, actually doing a competitive analysis to see what's out there. Mm -hmm. Um, but to know why you want to write the book. So, so first, start practicing your writing. Number two, know why you want to write the book. Number three, know what success means to you. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we all think, um, you know, we're going to write a book and we're going to become a bestseller and make tons of money. And, you know, for some people, that's not the goal. And the mm-hmm. fact is that there are very few people who have New York Times bestselling books and make tons of money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So yeah. you really mm-hmm. have to know why. And so if your audience is primarily entrepreneurs and business people, I'd be asking, you know, do you want this book to to actually bring in customers and clients? And if so, then when you start your book, you're you're focused on that. What are my my potential or prospective clients and and customers? What do they need and want? Mm-hmm. Like, what questions do they have that need to be answered? What problems do they have that need to be solved? And I would be structuring a book around that. Mm-hmm. So again, it brings us back to the planning stage, really. And that doesn't mean they can't include their, their story in it. Mm-hmm. Okay, but maybe their personal story is something that actually should only be for something very short or be woven through the book as opposed to being, for instance, a memoir. Mm-hmm. A memoir mark is very crowded. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, so mm-hmm. those, are, those are the first things I would say. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, that's great advice, actually, um, for people to get started, um, just to know why. Because some people, you know, already have an idea of why they want to put something out there. But others, I think, just kind of get caught up in the idea, well, I have to do this. But they, you know, when you ask those questions, they may not really have answers. And and they really have to do that before they begin. So that, right. that and, yeah. Yeah. And if I can interrupt, mm-hmm. uh, the why is enormously important. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have mm-hmm. a section in Creative Visualization for Writers about the why because here's the thing. If you just say, I need to write a book, Mm -hmm. like I know I should write a book, you're not necessarily invested in that, Mm -hmm. in that activity. Mm -hmm. And if you're not invested, if if it's not 
something that compels you or that um, you have attached meaning to, you know, if you don't have a big why for mm -hmm. doing it, you're going to have a really hard time completing that task. So when, but when you, when you know the reason that you want to write this book and it's a compelling reason for you, you really have a lot of meaning attached to it, or there's a result that's very important to you that you can get by writing this book. Mm -hmm. The likelihood of you following through is much, much higher. Mm, that's true. That makes sense. It's, it's you really know what you're trying to create and why you're doing it, and that's that's a perfect way to put it. Because you know, some people I've heard from, you know, sometimes they get connect uh, contacted on LinkedIn, and they'll be kind of like, oh well, I want to just write this, and you're asking questions, and they really don't have <laughs> very good answers about it. Um, it's just kind of an idea for them, but they may not really know what they really want to do with it. So, um, right. you know, I think that's perfect. Um, we're going to take a very short break, and we will be right back. Law Depot is a leading publisher of do-it-yourself legal documents. They offer state-specific business documents that can be completed within minutes. Visit WomenEntrepreneurSecrets.com for your exclusive 5% discount off all documents. Simply click on Legal Forms in the top menu to get to the selection of documents for the busy entrepreneur. Don't see the document you want listed? No problem. Just click on any link and it'll take you to the Law Depot site and you can see the entire selection. Forms include estate planning, business forms, family, financial, and real estate. There's a lot there on the site. And when you go through the WomenEntrepreneurSecrets.com link, you'll receive your 5% discount. That's Law Depot, the leading publisher of do-it-yourself legal documents. Okay, we're back with Nina Amir, and she has written creative visualization for writers, and um, among other things um, that she's written, how to blog a book and the author training manual. So she definitely, and besides publishing many books herself, she really knows um, the ins and outs of the industry. So, you know, I want to ask a quick question for you. You know, there's so many changes happening in um, publishing right now, especially, I guess, with the technology and so many people self-publishing. Um, you know, what, what are some things that you would, would tell to people who are aspiring authors who want to get out there and self-publish? You know, are there some things they need to look out for right now? Uh, there are a couple things. So, in terms of uh, what they need to, to know mm -hmm. is that um, self-publishing it isn't as easy as people say, at least not to do it well. Mm -hmm. Everyone seems to be saying, oh, you just, you know, write a book and you throw it up on Amazon and <laughs> you're in business, right? right. You're going to have a bestseller. <laughs> and, you know, in fact, if you want to do it well, even if you just do an ebook. Mm hmm you have to write something of value. Mm -hmm. It can be short. It could be 5,000 words. Mm -hmm. But you have to write something of high value, and it has to be the same quality as a traditionally published book. Not that all traditionally published books are so great, mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but you know they're, they're edited and right. proofread. It goes through two or three rounds of editing. They go through your proofreader, and then there are professional designers who do the cover mm -hmm. um, and the interior design. So you have to do all those things. And if you're going to do an ebook, it has to be formatted correctly. Because if it's not formatted correctly, then Amazon gets complaints and they they shut it down. Mm. So what you have to realize is that if you're going to be a self-published author, you're opening a business. You are becoming a publisher. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're opening a self a, a publishing company, and you are now managing a team. They might be all subcontractors, mm -hmm. but you're managing a team. Like I said. Of, different editors, designers, proofreaders, maybe an indexer, you know, formatters. If this is not what you want to do, if it's not how you want to spend your time, self-publishing is not for you. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some mm -hmm. people who love this. They love the control. They like the fact that they make more money than traditionally published authors do per book. Um, although traditionally published authors get paid up front for the mm -hmm. work, whereas self-published authors are putting their money on the line. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but so this is something to know. And um, the other thing, um, you mentioned what, what to look out for. 
Um, I would be looking out for uh, for these companies that uh, are they're, they're author services companies or um, uh, subsidiary presses. And they what they're doing is they're really vanity presses. Mm -hmm. What they're doing is they're taking your money. And they're saying, we'll edit it and design it and get it up, you know, mm -hmm. or get it out for you. And um, it does not produce a commercially viable book because mm -hmm. their template covers and designs and their editors are not always so great. And, uh, yeah, sometimes it's hard to get your rights back from mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. So I would be looking out for anything like that where you're paying money and they have this this list of services they're mm, offering you. Yeah. Um, if you want help getting your book published and you want to self-publish, I'd be looking for what we call assisted self-publishing. Mm -hmm. There are people out there, um, your listeners can email me. I have a, a colleague and a friend who does this, you know, where they help you get it edited. They help you. you know, they have the team. Mm -hmm. And all you do is give them the manuscript and then they'll help you get it ready and up on, on Amazon. Mm, that's great. Yeah, because I, I know a couple of people, a, a relative, one of them's a relative, who went through one of those um, presses, and um, she didn't say how much money she spent, but um, I know it was probably quite a lot, and then she was asking me for some advice, but then when I wanted to talk with her, she, you know, kind of didn't want to go, you know, want to have the discussion, so I don't know, perhaps she was, you know, not feeling comfortable after she knew how much she probably invested with this company. And maybe didn't really want to go there. You know, I'm not sure, but um, you know, I kind of wish she had come to be first and and just had asked some questions because I know she probably spent a lot of money. Um, right. Yeah. For what was. Created. Yeah, and the other thing is that if you're wanting to have any kind of a commercial success, and your book goes up onto Amazon and says that it's published by Lulu or mm. by Author House or Ex Libris or any of these, um, there's a stigma to that because mm -hmm. these are really what used to be the vanity presses. Yeah. And, you know, even if your book goes up and it says it's published by, by Amazon, mm -hmm. right? There's a stigma to that. Mm -hmm. It is much better to start a publishing company to have an imprint name. Mm -hmm. So for instance, my self published books are, if they're on Amazon, they don't say they're published by Amazon. They say they're published by pure spirit creations. Mm -hmm. That's the name of my publishing company. Mm -hmm. That's my imprint. Mm -hmm. So you, know, you want to have that on the spine of your book. Right, you know? right. You know, you wish it was, you know, mm -hmm. penguin or something, but <laughs> you're right. going to do it on your, or maybe you don't, you want to but right. yeah, the point is that you, you have a publishing company on there. Right. That's, that's another excellent point, um, you know, for listeners to take in. So, um, I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I was told that, uh, the same advice by someone uh, a few years ago who was a coach and she self published and she created, um, a, a company, uh, for her book. So it is, you know, it's things that you don't know until someone shares that with you and go, oh, okay, that makes sense. And, you know, let me, um, take advantage of that. And, and, um, you know, I think a lot of people coming in may not know these things and they just hear, the, the people who are trying to get their money and they don't know um, any, you know, they don't know the truth of it all. And then they've written these big checks and, and then suddenly they realize when it's almost, um, you know, when their book is already kind of caught and their rights are, um, you know, involved with these other people. And then they realize that maybe they made a mistake. So, um, right. yeah, hopefully people listening in will, won't make those mistakes and, and will make some better choices. So Nina, please share with everyone where they can find more about you and your books. So they can go to Nina Amir.com. It's N I N A A M as a mother. I R as in Robert.com. And they can find out all kinds of things there. That's my primary website. And, uh, they can also find all my books at booksbyninaamir.com. And, uh, you know, they can also visit my blogs. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, there is a blog on ninaamir.com. It's mostly personal development. Uh, but uh, the other blogs are rightnonfictionnow.com and howtoblogabook.com. Mm, excellent. So, um, Nina, you know, we're talking about visualization and, and mindsets and, and habits and such. You know, how, how do they affect the ability for a writer to manifest a dream writing career, do you think? <laughs> and there are a lot of aspects to that. So, <laughs> the visualization is one of them because mm -hmm. I think that it does help you, you know, as I said, retrain your brain. Mm -hmm. uh, but 
to, to create that dream career as a writer and an author takes, um, takes some planning and it takes foresight. It takes a vision. Mm. So we have visualization, but you know, you have to have a vision of where you're mm-hmm. going, right? You're where you are right now and you want to get to successful authorship. Mm-hmm. So you have to have a vision of, of where you're going. Then you also have to break it down into the steps, the map, mm-hmm. right? That's going to get you from where you are from here mm-hmm. to there. And so you have to map out those steps and that takes some education in the publishing industry. And I highly recommend my book, the author training manual for that. Mm-hmm. Um, it will, but you want to learn what, you know, what does it take? Because you, there are things you have to do such as build a platform, mm. right? So a platform is, uh, your ability to reach your target readers, uh, in whatever way that is, whether it's through articles or speaking or, um, blogging, social media, doesn't really matter, but you have to build this audience that's ready for your book, right? So that's part of creating this career. And then you have to look at, I mean, I do these big career maps with people, you know, career plans um, that want to be authors or want, or, or want to build a business around their books and make money because see, that's the other thing. Do you want to monetize this or are you just wanting to write a book or are you wanting to build a business around it? So you have to have a vision of all of that. Will I have courses related to my book? Will I do coaching relating to related to my book? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, when you know where you're going, then it's a matter of doing it. And there lies the biggest problem because we get in our own way. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, and I, I, I'm, people think I'm so productive and yet there's a lot of my day where I am distracted. Mm. So this is, <laughs> this is where the mindset comes in and the high performance training. Um, you know, you want to be a high performance writer mm. and that means mm-hmm. having clarity about your project, about your career, about the steps you have to take and, and really, really having clarity about what you have to do every day. Mm-hmm. You know, what's your, what are your priorities in order to get you where you want to go, which is successful authorship. You need to have the energy to do that. You need to, um, you know, you need to feed your, your brain what it, what it needs, which is oxygen. So mm-hmm. exercising and breathing exercises will help you have the endurance to get through the day as well as the clarity and um, creativity mm-hmm. to do the work, right? You want to be eating well and you want to be drinking a lot of water, all the things your brain needs, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to take care of yourself. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there's this whole physiology aspect, which people don't talk about much, but if you're tired all the time, for right. instance, you will not be able to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, so then, uh, and, and you have to bring the right energy to the table, basically, or to the computer. You have to bring good energy there so mm-hmm. that you can do this. Um, then, of course, you have to have the courage to do it because right. you. Um, there are a lot of people who are afraid to, to put their work out into the world because they think they'll be judged or criticized um, and uh, or be rejected. Mm-hmm. And so you, you have to have courage. You have to develop that courage. Um, and then you have to be able to produce work in the time you have. So a lot of people will say, I want to be a writer, but I don't have the time. Or life always gets in the way. This is, you know, this comes down to productivity. You can be productive in every area of your life. But when it comes to creating a writing career of your dreams, you have to write. So you, have <laughs> yeah. to, you know, yeah, so you have yeah. to block time. And when you have that time, you say, okay, I'm writing, you know, for an hour in the morning then in that time you have to focus your attention Mm -hmm. and you know, you can't be distracted. You have to be focused in the moment. You have to be present in the moment with that writing. Mm -hmm. And all of this takes, I think influence. Most people think about influences, you know, the ability to persuade others. We have to be able to persuade ourselves. Mm. So if you want to have a career as a writer, you better be able to influence yourself to sit down at the computer and write and to be focused, be present. Right. So all of this comes together to, you know, help you, uh, you know, carry out your uh, plan to get from where you are now to successful authorship, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. So, you know, this is why I talk about high performance, because the all the majority of people say they want to write. Matter of fact, 81 percent of Americans say they want to write a book and only two percent ever do it. Wow. And I think it's not having that strong why and not. Uh, doing the planning so that they know what to write when they sit down. You know, they have that clarity and they say, today this is what I'm writing. Yes. And then also not going through, you know, not developing the habits mm. that support them. The habits you have right now 
are achieving your level of success. And if you're not happy with that level of success, the book's not getting written, or you know, you want this whole new career as an author, um, you better change your habits. Wow. Yes. Totally agree. I think that's great um, for you to mention because I think a lot of people, I, I don't hear that ever mentioned. <laughs> people talk about writing books, about habits and self-care. I, I think this is fantastic. I, I never hear anybody mention these things. This is key. Yeah, you know, it is key. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> I get a lot yeah. of questions because, you know, I've been an author coach for a long time. And now mm -hmm. I have a curriculum, an author training curriculum based on the author training manual. And I'm a book coach and mm -hmm. I've edited books and I'm mm -hmm. a blog coach. And, you know, I do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And people say to me, why did you then go out and become a certified high performance coach? Mm -hmm. I say, because that is the foundation of mm -hmm. success in any career, yeah. any career. I mean, I can coach anyone, mm -hmm. you know, in, in any area. Area on high performance, mm. but as when it comes to writers, nobody's talking about that. That if you don't have the habits and the mindset yes. and the energy and all mm -hmm. these things, yes. you're you're not going to make it. Exactly. And, and yeah, the, the self care. Who talks about that? That you need to have. If you don't have seven hours of sleep every night, you're functioning impaired, like yes. you were drunk. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not mm -hmm. feeding your brain oxygen, water, every day, not to mention nutrients, mm -hmm. you know, you can't function at your highest level. And if you don't, um, you know, use your body, you don't move your body, then you're not going to feel great. You're going to come to the computer tired, lethargic, and, and not have the, the endurance to run that marathon. Right. So, yeah, it's key, and people don't talk about it, but that's why I have decided to focus so much attention on that. Mm hmm and it's it's perfect because they don't and i think a lot of people don't realize what's involved when they really sit down and say i'm going to write a book it's not what they believe <laughs> it's not as simple as as they may think and and it's all there's all these different parts that have to be lined up for them to be able to produce so i'm i'm glad that you're mentioning that because it's not something as i said i've ever heard and it, so many people miss that point and they they really are surprised when they know they actually have to sit down and write, you know, I've talked to, to someone and they were asking about writing and I said, well, you know, these different things involved and you have to actually sit down and what's your idea and blah, blah, blah. And they, I could tell that they were just kind of overwhelmed by the idea <laughs> that they had to right. do all that. Yeah, they, and people <laughs> come to me for, for coaching, for author coaching, and um, especially if they do my, well, it doesn't really matter if they just do my author coaching, which is personalized to them, right. or my mm -hmm. curriculum, mm -hmm. which also offers them an opportunity to do personalized coaching, but mm -hmm. takes them through a real curriculum to teach them how to produce a marketable book. Mm. They always are surprised at how much time I spend um, telling them about the planning of the book yes. yeah. <laughs> and how, how I push them to do that, mm -hmm. to do a market analysis, a competitive analysis, to write out chapter summaries, mm -hmm. all the stuff. They're like, can't I just write my book already? <laughs> and I keep saying, no, 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 you can't. <laughs> because if you do all this, when you're done, there's what I call this precious moment. When you finish the planning, when you can see your book and feel it and touch it. It's the mm, visualization. Yeah. I can see that book, and not only that, I know exactly what's in that book, the content, and I am ready to sit down and write it. Yes. Now I know what to write, and now the, pro the, the process of writing becomes easier. Yes. Because you're ready. Not only have you provided, hopefully, you know, done the train, the mind training, <laughs> you know, the high performance training so that you can be a productive writer um, and an effective writer, but you also have done the planning, mm -hmm. the training to get you to the point of being able to write that book. And seriously, when you combine those two, it's like kaboom. Mm -hmm. You can write so quickly, but you need all of that in order to, to, to write without what you're saying, that, that feeling of overwhelm mm -hmm. and being stuck and, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, that all goes away. If you, if you plan and you train, you, you will be prepared to write this book, and it will be an easy and fun process. Mm, that's perfect. And it's, it's very, very true. So everybody listening, um, please take that to heart because it, it is true. Um, those things have to be done ahead of time. So I um, hope you're 
taking this in and, and believing it because it can be a better process if you if you do all that. So, Anita, we just have a couple of minutes left. You know, are there any final thoughts um, that you want to share? Uh, yeah, I think that even though, you know, I said that, that self-publishing isn't um, always easy, I would say that now is a great time to become an author. Mm -hmm. There's just so many different ways to publish. Mm -hmm. uh, just but, but make sure that you're not getting caught up in these, um, you know, write a book in a weekend. You're not going to have a finished product in a weekend. <laughs> you know, so just don't get caught up in this whole thing that it really is so easy. Because what you want to be like anything, to be successful at it takes effort. Mm -hmm. It takes time and effort. And uh, you want to produce something that is highly valuable. But it's, you know, for the entrepreneurs out there, what's the, what's the best business card you can hand out? It's a book. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And even for those who are not entrepreneurs, sometimes the most um, satisfying and fulfilling thing we can do, a way to fulfill our purpose, is to write a book because mm -hmm. you really can have a positive and meaningful impact with your words. So I encourage everyone to, to, to write and to get their book out. And if they feel like they have a story to tell or a message they want to share or a mission or um, just a way to help their client, you know, help boost their business. Mm -hmm. Write a book. Mm -hmm. Write a book. That's great. I totally, I totally agree. So, um, this has been a really fantastic discussion. I'm sure there's so much uh, uh, more we could talk about. We could go on for quite a while because there's so much involved with publishing these days, and and with so many people desiring to put their work out there and to write and and use what they've written in in so many ways to serve their clients and and you know in general to serve a lot of other people as well. So. Um, this is definitely a big topic and, um, your book sounds fantastic and I'm so glad that you wrote that. I'm, I'm excited to get my hands on it. So I want to thank you so much for joining me today, Nina. It was just fantastic. Oh, well, thank you for being here. It was a pleasure and a lot of fun. So everyone, I know you enjoyed the show, so make sure you share this on social media and, you know, check out Nina's books and her website and her services and really take advantage of that. If you're someone who has a dream of writing a book or you're a business owner or someone who's thinking of it and just wants to get some information, certainly check that out. I know you will enjoy it and also share it with your friends who may be interested in hearing more. And um, as I said, share the show on social media. So once again, it's been Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey. Thanks so much for being with us today, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. You can also join in the conversation on Facebook.com slash Women Entrepreneurs and on the website, WomenEntrepreneurSecrets.com. And don't forget to listen in on dbcoach.podomatic.com and on iTunes.